go to the menu. So it's got a rect it's got a the default menu is this grid, which is fine. I'm used to that. And uh, you can um, connect it up to your geocaching account, which is handy since I like geocaching. So that's good. You just you just ent you just uh, go into this activity here, and then it gives you a uh, gives you a uh, registration number. Then you go to the geocaching website, and you type that number, and then this device is known to geocaching. So you can send <coughs> you can send um, uh, geocaches to it, so you can find them. And it's got a uh, root planning. That's good. Now this. This version has a as wireless, which is nice. Let's see. I guess that's under setup, yeah. So if you go into setup, you can hook up to your Wi-Fi, so that you don't have to plug it in to uh, get geocaches on here, presumably. It does have Bluetooth. You can you can get an app on your phone for this device and um, have it uh, link up with it, so you can. Get some information back and forth through your app and your phone and uh, and this device so that's nice and it's got all the usual things you can set the time although it does get the time automatically once it knows your location okay so i think we've done all we can with the bubble so i'm gonna go ahead and peel this off and now the screen's a little more clear, obviously, but looks good to me. Uh, I'll bring up a map and we'll take a look at it. So it's got a map of the United States in with all the roads, and you can zoom in with the plus button. And you can uh, zoom out with the minus button. And it's got towns. There's the town of El Dorado Springs in some state. I'm not sure what state it is. Somewhere in the Midwest. You can find entertainment. Yeah, so it's got all the street. So this could be really handy. Built in if you don't have any phone uh, phone connections. So that's handy. And then as far as geocaching, we'll try that and see what we can find with geocaching. All right, so I downloaded some geocaches. And you can just hit enter. And you can zoom in. I can select this one, Tice Valley Park, and just say go. All right, so I downloaded some geocaches from an area. And I can just select one of them. So I tap the Rockies. And I can zoom in. See a closer view of where it is, and then I can just hit the enter button and say go, and it'll start navigating for where I am to where this is. So that's really handy. You want to try to find geocaches. Another handy feature it's got a flashlight. So you just, it's on your grid here. Select flashlight, and then you got to push the on button. And it's a flashlight. You can have it flash for emergencies. You can have a flash SOS. Turns off Wi-Fi, that's interesting. Handy. I see then it's got so nine will flash fast. And zero of course is. And you can change the intensity it looks like. How do you change the intensity? I don't see how to get on that. Turn it on or off. Turn it on. You can change the intensity. Alright, zero. That could be handy in an emergency. And it's got a stopwatch. track of somebody running. Reset, pretty standard there. Calculator, that could be good for solving uh, puzzle caches in the field. Two plus 
2 equals 4. All right, it works. Sun and the moon. So sunrise and sunset, that's always handy for all sorts of hiking and things like that. So that's great. You do photo viewer. I'm not sure what I'm do with that. So. Area calculation. I guess if you're doing some crit uh, primitive survey, you can do that. So that's pretty good. Waypoint averaging. Huh. I guess if you're finding a waypoint, but you're going to find a place of cache, you can uh, take a whole bunch of measurements and it'll average them for you. That's pretty handy. Bird's Eye Direct. I can download imagery from uh, satellites. I believe that's what that is. And Connect IQ, that's with the Garmin app on your, on your, on your PC or your computer. So that's pretty good. And notifications, if you get up to your app on your phone, you can get notifications from your phone, like uh, text messages or whatever. So, All right, so I'm really happy with this. It's not too heavy. It's, uh, it's a great upgrade from this one. I'm going to go ahead and turn this one on so you can see the difference in the screens. So this screen, this has been a really good one. The reason I bought this one because it works well in bright sunlight. So this one seems to work really well in this bright, brightly lit room. So I'm assuming it's going to be bigger. You can see how much bigger the screen is. And they both have buttons, which is what I wanted. Uh, but um, just I've had this one over 10 years. It's been good. But Garmin's just, the, the, the Delorme, as far as I know, has stopped making these. So. They're kind of getting out of the business and Garmin is going strong. So I think this is a good upgrade at this time. So I'd say the Beta Signi re recommends this. I haven't used the field yet. So I'll, I'll be, before I finish this video, I'll be doing some field work with it and we'll see how it works in the field. Then we can come to a final conclusion. I want to go over a couple of setup things. So if you go into the system menu, you can set up your satellites. So I decided to use uh, GPS plus Galileo. So you have different choices here. You can use uh, GPS mode, which is just the United States system. GLONASS, which is the Russian system. I'm not going to use that if I can avoid it. And Galileo is the newest system by the European Union. And from what I've read, it has uh, at least uh, 20, 30 satellites up already. And it can offer greater accuracy than GPS or GLONASS. So a combination of GPS and Galileo will give you uh, better accuracy. So it does use up more battery, but I'm more interested in accuracy of location. If you're searching for a geocache, the more accurate you are, the less time you'll spend wasting looking around in the wrong place. So battery, since I have replaceable batteries, I'm not really that uh, worried about uh, battery life. The other thing I turn on is WASS, WAAS, and EGNOS. I'm not sure what EGNOS is, but WASS uses um, ground-based uh, location towers that put out a signal, so you can get even more accuracy if you turn that on. Again, it uses more battery, but I, I use this on my uh, old GPS device, and you definitely get better accuracy if you turn that on. So I want to recommend using those. So that's the satellite. And down here is your battery type. So I'm using Ni nickel metal hydride batteries, but you can also use lithium or alka alkaline. So I usually take Take, oh, it has pre-charged. So the pre-charged must be the fancy Eneloop ones like I've got. So those are called pre-charged NIMH. So I'm going to switch it to that. So they have different life characteristics than the regular NIMH. So they are, can hold a higher charge longer. And lithium batteries are good, but I've had bad luck with rechargeable lithium, so I don't use those. And then I usually carry a couple of alkaline batteries AA batteries as a backup in case my batteries run out. So we're going to switch to pre-charge and IMH. So that should give us the best battery life so the GPS knows how to manage its battery a little bit better. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Post a comment if you have any questions or ideas and I'll try to respond. That's all for now, but more videos are coming. And if you want to see them, please subscribe to my channel and turn on the notification icon if you don't want to miss one. This is Beta Signi signing out, and keep looking up.